Please do. I appreciate it. All right. You said the victim was a 16-year-old. Did you know her? Well, sure. I reckon the whole town did. Meaning? She's Lise Clarkson, the little grandbaby of the Clarkson family. The Clarkson I forgot family? I gotta keep pressing A. That's right. You ain't seen they sign on your way in here? All right, uh... The one above that huge coal storage complex. The Let's one see above something. that huge coal storage complex. The Let's one above something. that huge coal storage okay. complex. The Let's one above something. that huge coal storage okay. complex. The Let's one see. Oh shit. A echo. Had a dragonfly on it. Sorry for the echo. Yeah, I switched and mics. That's the Clarkson family seat. They own most of the land around here. From the sugar plantations right down to the food processing plant. Yeah, I reckon they got a stake in just about everything. They even own the water tower on the edge of town, you know. They're the ones who built up this town, and they still support it. Where's the Clarkson's house? What do you know about the Clarkson's house? Now, I ain't got nothing bad to say. But I'm gonna talk straight to you. You best get clear of that place. That family ain't just some gang. They're a whole different kind of beast. They folks with real power. Remnants of the good old boys who shaped America in the, especially the head of the family, P.J. Clarkson. He's the kind of monster who goes around eating other monsters. And I'm sure he's on edge now with his granddaughter getting murdered and all. So don't go barging in with that shiny FBI badge of yours and think you'll be safe for nothing. Things are different down here. So if you plan on sticking around, you best remember that. I see. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> oh, man, I'm on Twitter, my fault. All right. Do I got Ghost of Shima? Yeah, I got the guy. I just bought it. Investigating the case? I just bought it. I threw it somewhere else over there. <laughs> Shoot, mister, what you think? Now, I told you this ain't no city. We in the bonafide boondocks here. They got the know-how to break up fights and keep folks from killing each other when they piss jaw. They sit down and talk it out with you heart to heart. And when that don't work, they just beat your ass. That's the deep south for you. This murder ain't like that, though. A little kid got killed. A weird way like something on the TV show the sheriff's department ain't never seen nothing like this live and let die angel heart and the pelican brief right nine out of ten people will name those titles when you ask them to think of a film set in New Orleans they're all excellent movies, but to me, they lack realism. Due to my line of work, I have a tendency to think deeply about what feels real and what doesn't. What's your point? Cat people. That's my point. Cat people. 1982, directed by Paul Schrader. The crowning achievement of Nastasia Kinski, the ultimate muse of the 80s.
the most vital element of that movie is the reality it depicts. Leopards who turn into humans have intercourse with humans and turn back into leopards. Then they can only turn back into humans again if they mutilate their lovers. I was awestruck by the sheer reality of it all. Understand? I'm talking about hyper-realism. After watching it, I felt like I just had to experience the world of cat people for myself. That's why I decided to visit New Orleans. Uh, okay. okay. That's a thought. I said to say anything. Like, wait, what? Another vital element of cat people? All right. It's the presence of Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell from Blue Thunder. Oh, talk about a masterpiece. Listen carefully, David. Only an amateur would call a Clockwork Orange his best movie. His best movies are Cat People and Blue Thunder. Period. You need to remember this, because it's the truth. Mm, whatever you say, mister. So, uh, what's your point again? Never mind, don't worry about it. I already covered all the important parts. God damn, so much damn text. When you say it was like something from a TV show, what exactly do you mean? Hey, mister. Why do you look so excited, huh? Like a kid asking grandma to read him a fairy tale. I just can't seem to keep myself away from young women who died in bizarre ways. I ain't seen it with my own eyes, but folks say they found the body hanging under a bridge on the bayou. And under that bridge, there was some kind of altar. An altar? Like something they use in black magic. Something horrible. Voodoo? Nah. It is New Orleans, so. What nothing like that. Just a weird altar. That's all? Oh, and the body was all cut up in pieces. Scattered around the altar like. So she was sacrificed. That's what the fella who discovered her said, yeah. Bingo, Zack. This case has got our names all over it. By the way, Mr. FBI, I ain't seen a car in the parking lot. How'd you get all the way out here, huh? Don't tell me you walked. Well, that's a very good question. Chef David, you've got a sharp eye. It's true that I didn't park my car in your parking lot. Do you know why? Can't say I do. Because it was stolen. Huh? But you with the FBI, right? Even FBI cars can be stolen. It could happen after you park your car on the side of the road and go off to do some legwork.
when you're eating lunch, when you're watching a movie, when you're asleep at night, when you're buying cigarettes at the local supermarket. Your car can be stolen anywhere. That's precisely what it means to be an FBI agent. In my case, my car was stolen while I was on my way down here. Wait, what? But no need to worry. I already reported it to the local authorities. Another mode? Want to hear the details? Not really. Accidentally skipped it, my fault. All right. But I'll listen if you want me to. Then please do. After I finished my work in Houston, I flew to New Orleans. Then, I rented a car at the airport. Whenever I visit the West Coast, I always rent a convertible, especially in California. But now I'm in hot and sticky Louisiana. So, I decided on a brand new hybrid car with a fully equipped air conditioner. I ain't gonna lie to you, this is probably the excuse of why they can drive cars car. in this game because the frame rate been going crazy. Oh yes, they're marvelous. Vehicles that utterly defy everything you think you know about cars. Now, in the year 2005, it feels like we finally entered the 21st century. Stomp down on the gas all you want. The engine won't make a sound. It's silent? At first, I felt like the landscape was moving past me. On yeah, it must be that skateboard. Give it a few more years. It's like the, I guess the excuse of not having cars in this game because the frame rate of this damn game. Who knows? In a decade or so, electric sports cars may end up lining the parking lots of Silicon Valley. I can see it now. It's the world of the last Starfighter. 1984, directed by Nick Castle. Yeah, I remember this is why I probably, what, what it changed me about this game, because these type of stories he be rambling about. It's famous for being the first film to utilize realistic CG, but I couldn't care less about that. See, I was mesmerized by the beautifully refined mech designs. It even made me wish that I could be one of them myself. Especially the Gunstar spacecraft. No other sci-fi movie has ever had. So, uh, yeah, where'd your hybrid car get stolen? Sorry, I got off topic. <laughs> wow. I noticed it was missing after I finished my lunch and walked out of the diner. Incidentally, this diner was located at the entrance to a small town just south off the I-10. I went out to get back in it, but my hybrid car was nowhere to be found. I remembered exactly where I'd parked it, right between a blue pickup truck and a hedgerow. But when I came back from lunch, it had completely vanished. Uh. In short, someone stole it. And in its place, they... Left me this. What? Skateboard. Really? Like I said. Skateboard. Alright. Try to play around this. Skateboard. This audio. Yes. While I was sliding my lunch into my stomach, someone was busy replacing my brand new hybrid car with a wooden board attached to four wheels. Remarkable, don't you think? So then, how did you get here? By riding the skateboard, obviously. Why do you look so surprised? No, I couldn't ride the board very well at first. But by the time I hit the three-mile mark, I'd more or less gotten the hang of it. Oh my god. By the ten-mile mark, I'd even learned to do a few tricks. It was a journey of self-discovery. Not even I knew I had this latent talent sleeping inside me. This summer's gonna be another hot one. It's supposed to get over 95 today. Watch out you don't go get heat stroke. The least Clarkson case needs us. Don't you think so, Zach? The cat people are what guided us to New Orleans. We should be thanking Malcolm McDowell. Once we get home, let's watch Blue Thunder again. Blue Thunder? That game, it's like a video game. I'm already looking forward to it. Aren't you, Zach? That's familiar. That's a little familiar. 
Zack. I'm an idiot. Try that again. The searing light. Alright. I guess I could turn the game by up a little bit more. It's the deep south. Oh! Oh! Hmm. That was a fabulous breakfast. Can't You're the world's greatest chef. He eats it. Uh, wait, mister. You didn't take a single bite. Single. Well, the tea was to die for. But I'd prefer coffee next time. What would a morning be without coffee? Yeah, so this game pretty much feel like an old PS2 slash 3 game from what I heard. How they been patching this damn game? Oh, I know Switch could. Oh God, I see it. Oh, return to Dark Room. Review the case. Go. This feels weird compared to the last one. Quest and free quest, I don't know. I could bear through this unless I get better stuff. Alright, I'm buying coffee just because. It's gonna be it's gonna be a doozy playing through this game and playing through a uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Oh God! That looks. The story is good. That's the reason I'm trying to play this. That's what I'm trying to play this. I heard the story is good. Son Rouge. We've been chasing it all over America. I feel like we're finally on the verge of finding something now. Don't you, Zack? I think it's about time we ordered a new briefcase. Yes, I know this one carries a lot of memories, but it's seen too much. This hole's from the shootout in Tucson. And this stain's from Miami. Ah, uh, Miami. Now that was a fascinating case. Billy, our perp, cut his own torso right in two. Even with the, the help of the drug, too. A feat like that still requires incredible. Even with the, the help of the drug, too. A feat like that still. Alright, I'm gonna have to make sure. Even with the, the help of the drug. 
beat my ass still. Alright, I'm gonna have to make sure. Dig the, the music. Alright, I think we good. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. It's a little too loud on my end. Try 40. Incredible mental fortitude. <laughs> There we go. I was so impressed that I forgot I'd left my briefcase on the floor. Same floor his blood gushed out onto. I know, Zach, I know. Now isn't the time for a trip down memory lane. drug that's been on the rise in four southern states. Personally, I think it originated right here in Louisiana. And Lee's Clarkson's murder must be connected to it somehow. The 16-year-old girl who was murdered. Her body was found beneath a bridge over the bayou. Along with a strange altar Powerful man who essentially controls the town of Lucare. And he seems to be more fearsome than your average gangster. I doubt he'll be willing to cooperate with any law enforcement, Zack. You know, I keep thinking about that movie we stopped to see on our way here, Zach. The Island, 2005, directed by Michael Bay. For a movie being shown at a cinema complex, it was surprisingly artistic. An experimental setting mixed with hard-hitting drama It was art house sci-fi. That director's going to change the history of art house films. Are you following me here? This is another special film that's setting a new standard, just like Star Wars and Blade Runner did. This is a turning point, Zach. You may be witnessing the birth of a vital new word that will soon become a part of film history. Yes, this single movie may be responsible for creating a whole new genre several years down the line. A genre known as island movies. I sure like the sound of that. Don't you, Zach? All right, let's. So I feel like this could be like the hood spot. Alright, there's two box store items. So need that be just change outfits. Oh yeah, about this stuff too. I'm wasting time doing that. Hey there, Chef. What's cooking? Chef, what are you talking about, sir? I'm the concierge, David. Wait, what? I just heard from our chef that you wish to learn the meaning behind our town's name. 
Yes, I've gathered that Lucare is French, but does it have any special meaning? Why, yes, sir, of course it does. A very clear, logical meaning. All names have meanings. Would you like to know what this one means? Yes, I would. Jolly good, sir. Then allow me to explain. Lucare means square in French. Ah. And? That's it. That's it? Yes, that's it, sir. Do take a gander at the town map in the lobby if it fancies you. It's beautiful, valuable, and old. I'm sure you'll understand once you see it. Now, please excuse me, sir. If you ever need anything, please don't hesitate to ask. Did you see that, Zack? That was clearly David. Not a twin, not a split personality, just the work of a true professional. It's bizarre, but I can understand it. Remember what they say, the job makes the man. That was a mission. All right, let's get up out of here, I guess? Do you feel that, Zach? Dozens of paintings no one will ever see faint scent of tobacco baked into these walls for over a century. Now that's what I call a hotel. Zach, can you see him? His fashion sense is beyond me, but he appears to be a gentleman. Get Perhaps him. we should talk to him. I ain't gonna lie to you, there's a lot of text going on in this game. This is definitely the Orleans Coast shirt. Nice tie. Did you buy it here? It's been a long time since someone spoke to me. No one these days ever tries to see me. They can see what's far in the distance, but are blind to what's in front of them. No. Maybe they're only pretending not to see. That's what civilized society does to people. Exactly. Ever since mankind got their hands on civilization, they zoomed away at a frightening speed. Zoomed away from what? <laughs> Don't be a fool. You know the answer. As for me, just call me Hoongan. Hoongan. Title given to a leader in a certain religion. Is that what you are? Hat sack, here we go. Fell tin maidens in the shrine of hunger. Find the flying serpent in the ambiguous zero. Dance with the flying serpent, and you will glimpse the other world. Ten maidens in an ambiguous zero. Got it. But what do you mean by other world? Follow the oracle. <laughs> Zack, did you hear all that? 
Looks like we've already taken our first step into chaos. But such is our duty. We need to accept the chaos, let it inside, then carefully dismantle it piece by piece. And after we've put all the pieces back into their rightful places, the truth will reveal itself. Let's capture the truth and present it with a shiny pair of silver bracelets, Zack. Okay. All right, we're supposed to go now. Oh yeah. Guess I'll save. I think it has an automatic save, but it is what it is. Guess you'll get up out of here. Zach, why are you in such a hurry? This is the country. We should take our time and enjoy ourselves. Let's try living by their rules for a bit. Check out the old map, uh, the hotel. Oh. Oh my god. Zach, this is Lucare. I think I'm finally starting to understand what our concierge was trying to say. You can tell this town was built by a very methodical person. No, wait. Maybe they just didn't care, and that's why it ended up this way. It's just another symbol of mankind's obsession with molding nature to fit our own rules. Zach, what did you think of Hoongun's Oracle? Despite all the dramatic build-up, it's little more than a childish riddle. Heartwarming, really. Exactly the kind of feeling one gets from the good old-fashioned countryside. Now let's start by tracking down those ten maidens. The oracle gave us a place and an act. We need to go to the Shrine of Hunger and fell ten maidens. Now where in this town can one satiate their hunger? The hotel and where? And the ten things that need to be knocked down. Simple, right? The answer very funny, Zach. Now it's time to get serious. Serious. You already know the answer, don't you? The answer is bowling. The shape of the bowling pin was based on the feminine form. The ten maidens are the ten pins. Alexis's diner and lane. This is it, Zach. There are even pins and a bowling ball on the sign. I bet we'll be able to eat some Cajun cuisine and bowl there. Maybe even both at the same time. Nice job, Zach. I knew you'd be able to find it. Now for the other oracle. There's no flying serpent on this map. Could it be a contrail or perhaps a dragon? I'm sure we'll find out later. First, let's just figure out where we need to go. Do you know what the ambiguous zero represents? Zero is usually treated as a base number, but under what conditions would a base number be ambiguous? 
The answer is temperature, Zach. Yes. Zero degrees Fahrenheit is minus 17.7 degrees Celsius, and zero degrees Celsius is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. You'd be hard pressed to find a more ambiguous zero than that. Very funny, Zach. Oh. Now it's time to get serious. You already know the answer, don't you? I wasn't paying attention. Very funny, Zach. Now you already know. Very fun. Now you already know. The Clarkson Food Delivery Services Cold Storage Warehouse. That's got to be it. Even with this blazing sun in the sky, they can easily keep the temperature below freezing. Be honest now, Zach. You knew the answer from the very start, didn't you? And how about that Hoongan? What a mysterious character. His oracles may end up determining how much time we spend in this town. Sorry, boss, but this is a smoke-free hotel. If you're dying of smoke, head out the entrance and you'll find a smoking area in the rear parking lot. What the Don't hell says NPC in the back? What the hell is wrong with your service, boss? Are you good friends with the concierge and the chef? Eh, we work at the same place, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I can't really say whether we're good friends with each other. We're all professionals, though. Nothing more, nothing less. I believe we've struck gold here, Zack. It just screams deep south. Actually, no, it doesn't. This is all his charm. So, if I want to smoke, I should go out the entrance and around to the rear parking lot? Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, I'll play by your rules. Get a strike at the diner. Oh my god. Who are you? Hey, you boss. How can I be of service? I gotta take a look. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pressure is meany. South, something. Yeah, big words. Yeah, big words. All right, let's get up out of here. Okay, find some more gameplay. I want to play it till I actually get to some combat. Then I might take a break. Then cop, come back in a stream. First, I'm gonna probably work on some music. Then upload something on the gaming channel. Probably upload this, and then uh. Probably start some of this Ghost of Tsushima. If the frame rate don't take a nosedive. Like it is. Hope they patch this game up though. I was going to wait till a price drop. You know this game price is going to drop by the end of the year. But you see, you know what? I kind of want to. Play, play this. I just hope this game don't crash on me. Compared to non-smokers, smokers have a 4.7 times greater chance of getting lung disease. You know that means it's more likely than getting asbestos poisoning? The risk of death from lung cancer is actually much lower than what you think it is. In fact, 
It's tiny when compared to heart disease, strokes, and pneumonia. We're always surrounded by easy ways to die, you know. Some people even get randomly struck by lightning and die right there on the spot. Then I reckon you also know that secondhand smokers have 1.3 times greater the risk compared to smokers? Of course. So you won't mind paying the damages when I die of lung disease? How about writing that in a contract for me? You got a pen, right? <laughs> oh my god, uh... <laughs> I promise to protect you from all the evil in our world. Well, that's stupid. By the way, what's your name? FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, just call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Um, is something wrong with you? Adults ain't supposed to act like that. I only asked for your name so I can write it on the contract. You should have been able to figure that out if you're a real FBI agent like you said. Come on, sign here. Right here on the paper. Just as I thought, Zack. This contract paper, it's a San Rouge wrapper. San Rouge is here, too. This must mean that San Rouge is connected to the Lee's Clarkson murder case somehow. This is a sprawling case that's spread across the entire South. It's within our jurisdiction, Zack. We'll need to steal the right to investigate from the local authorities at once. By the way, miss, what's your name? Patricia Woods. But I gotta write my name myself, or else it won't be a real signature. Tell me, Patricia, does this town have a sheriff, or is it under the jurisdiction of the nearest city police? Perfect timing. Well, go on and steal it if you want it. I was just thinking about how this is way out of my daddy's league. Tch. Thank you for the information, Patricia. Okay, Zach, it's time to get to work. How should we seize control from the sheriff this time? All right, even special agent needs to stay sharp when it comes to the basics. Run, crouch. Why run and dodge the safe button? Oh, God. I oh, you know how to fight now. Let's just wasted it. Why is this, this the dodge button? All right, let's talk to this guy. Oh my God, these transitions are awful. <laughs> hey there. So, uh, you're the fella from the FBI I've been hearing so much about. I'm Melvin. They call me the sheriff around here. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan? But call me York if you can. That's what everyone calls me. Huh? Well, all right. Mr. York, how's that sound? Fine by me. <laughs> I'm sure you figured this out, but our town's a small one. I feel like playing a PS2 game. Yeah, folks are already busy spreading gossip about how some FBI agents come to town. <laughs> now, uh, now, I reckon you came from the city. What was it? D.C., L.A., or New York? Anywho... In the city, it's normal not to know who your neighbor is. Fella who moves in next to you could cook up a dozen folks in his backyard and no one would bat an eye. That's the city for you. Now, I never lived in one myself, but I visited him a few times, so I know what it's like. All pigs must die in the city of wolves. Yeah! Now, does that sound badass or what? I bet you'd 
Hey. <laughs> I know, I know, CLG. I'm just trying to make a little small talk, that's all. <laughs> wow. Wow. Anywho, around these parts, everyone knows each other's name. So lots of folks get leery when they see an étranger like you. And since it's my duty to protect the town, I thought I'd stop by and say hello. Zack, it looks like this sheriff is quite the happy-go-lucky type. A clear indication of just how peaceful this town is. Melvin, about the Lee's Clarkson case... I knew you were here for that case! Can't put one past the FBI. Mm. So they even got eyes on the smallest of towns like us, huh? Mm, mm, mm. Our world is filled with information, and it's all within their grasp. FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Lee's Clarkson case is connected to a top secret case that we've... I know, I know. If you're fixing to take the lead, <laughs> then go right ahead. I'm just the humble sheriff of a tiny little town. My jobs are to stop my neighbors from beating the piss out of each other and listen to old folks complain. Honestly, this whole murder case has been weighing me down. So I'm gonna give you my full cooperation, Mr. Special Agent, sir. Well, Zach, that was anticlimactic. I didn't even get to use my secret weapon. Melvin. There's a cold storage warehouse on the southern end of town, isn't there? I'd like to get permission to enter it. Say what? You want to see where the body's being kept, right? Oh, I get it now. Lisa's body, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, that's what I call a special agent. You already figured that much out. Mm. But, uh, hmm, I'm... Not too sure that, uh, going down there at this point is really gonna help much, you know? Explain it yourself, Daddy. That's incredible. I don't believe this. Amazing. Did you hear that, Zack? They put the body in a cold storage warehouse. This is fantastic. Insanely fantastic. R really well, uh, how about that? <laughs> well, all right then. I'll head on down to the warehouse ahead of you and make sure we get permission to search it. Sounds good. The management company only keeps the warehouse open during certain hours, so you'll have to come during those hours. I ain't looking to create any further disturbances. So be on time. Got it? Come on, let's roll, CLG. I'm gonna walk home, Daddy. I still got another stop to make. Oh, if you say so, sweetie. <laughs> She's a real sharp one, as you can see. So That's I so try mad. to stay out of her way. Well, all right then, York. I'll see you at the warehouse. Alright. Alright, brick wall of the NPC. Uh what I just hit. Hey you You ain't secretly cutting kids up and sticking them into jars while you work as an FBI agent. <laughs> oh my circuit, god, are you? Or Using your FBI connections to sell kids to child trafficking organizations? I've arrested people who've done both, but I've never engaged in either of those activities myself. Of course, I have imagined doing such things in order to learn more about the psychology of the criminals I deal with. It was just a joke. Why are you getting all serious? And don't tell me what you imagine. Or else I'll get scared of you for real. The country ass, ain't no till they made hey. this game in the south. Can I come with you? You signed a contract with me, remember? 
And besides, I'm kind of worried about my daddy. Do whatever you like. This is America, land of the free. But I have one condition. What condition? Don't ask me about Zack. It's a private matter. Zack, it feels like she's carrying something with her. Kind of reminds me of you back when we first met. I can't leave her alone like this. You feel the same way, don't you? Alright, in any case, help you stay aware of the direction of the distance. Keep your destination, main story, side quest, waypoint, landmarks. Wow. The game, oh my god. I got a gun. I keep wasting that. By the way, Patty, what do you usually do when you're at home? Is this an interrogation? I guess we'll oh, go no. there first. I just figured that since we're working together now, it'd be a good idea to learn a little more about you. Should an adult male like you really be asking a little girl this kind of question? I feel like I heard a story about this sort of thing on the news once. There's a time and a place for everything. You know exactly who I am. And I've also introduced myself to your father. Besides, you're the one who said you want. I want to oh, hit the robot. Then. Yeah, I messed up the, the text. Oh, well. Okay, Patty. I'm going to try asking you that question again. What do you do when you're at home? Ah, uh, I watch. Melvin called you a strange name. CLG. Oh, I think. my God. What exactly does that mean? Clever little girl. That's what it stands for, at least. This game it's is... nice that he made up his own nickname for me and all, but it sounds kind of weird. I wish he'd call me something normal, like just Patricia or Patty, you know? Patty? Now that name's got a ring to it. I like it. How about Zach and I call you Patty from here on out? Do whatever you like. Weirdo. You're heading to the warehouse, right? You gonna go straight there? Well, I'm not sure yet. I'll have to talk to Zach. We're also on a mission to fell ten maidens, you see. I'm eager to visit Alexis's diner in Lane, but we've only just arrived in this town, so it might be nice to stroll around a bit. What? I thought you came here to investigate. Patty, you're still j Oh my god. Patty, is something wrong? I got something to say. When I first met you in the hotel parking lot, you mentioned Saint Rouge, right? If you want to find it, maybe you should track down Professor R. Professor R. Yeah. Professor R owns the jazz bar on the other side of the bayou. How do you know that? Because Because, huh? Interesting. All right, I guess we're going here here for another thirty minute cutscene. Everything else seems like it runs right, but everything else seems like it don't runs right, if that makes sense. T 
ten maidens, Zack. Let's topple their hourglass figures and complete this oracle once and for all. Oh, my lord. I don't believe I've seen you around here before. <laughs> Sorry, honey, but you can't smoke in here. Since you're with Patricia, I'm guessing you're some friend of Melvin's. He's Agent York from the FBI. This is Alexis, the owner of this restaurant. I'm helping out Agent York in his investigation. We signed a contract. Oh, my lord. Well, ain't that something? I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. Everyone's always called me that. Oh, my lord. Well, that's got to be the strangest introduction I've ever heard. No wonder everyone in town's been talking about you. Pat. I want a chocolate sundae, but no cherries. I want two wafers instead. Don't put too many Rice Krispies on it. Oh, but don't scrimp on the chocolate syrup either. Oh, my lord. And what'll it be for you, honey? Alexis, are these photos of the town? Oh, you like my pictures? My hobby's collecting snapshots of what a town used to be like. So whenever someone gives me an old picture, I just put it up here on display. Our world these days feels a bit cold to me, you know? Just thought it'd be nice to help folks remember what it was like in the good old days. Zach, did you hear that? The good old days. Even in a remote town that's already far behind the times, there are still people who yearn for the past. She told me what was going on, you know. What? Lise, you don't need to try and hide it from me, honey. Last time she came here, she told me all about it. Some odd fella was following her around. Stalking her like. What kind of fellow? She said he had a really tall shadow. How tall? As tall as an oak tree. Did that ring any bells for you? Sadly, it didn't. I know just about everyone in this here town, but I ain't never seen a man who stands that tall. Maybe it really was an oak tree and she just mistook it for someone. Sometimes the silhouettes of them trees with lots of Spanish moss hanging down make me feel a little funny too. I don't think so, Alexis. Lise said the shadow was following her, correct? That means she must have been stalked by a man as tall as an oak tree. If she had only mistaken an oak tree for a person, she wouldn't have described it that way. She might have said, hmm. It felt like a crowd of people was staring at me. Yes, exactly. She certainly wouldn't have talked about being followed by someone. Thank you, Patty. Zack, this data is all very intriguing, but it isn't the answer we're looking for. We came to knock down the Ten Maidens, remember? Oh, yeah! Booyah! Oh, I got a turkey! Truly mesmerizing, Zack. This is why I never tire of small-town investigations. Same goes for you, right? Agent York, if you're fixing to bowl, you're gonna be disappointed. Mrs. Carpenter never lets anyone else use the lane while she's here. Patty, that's exactly what I came to do. You see, Zack and I need to bowl down ten maidens. Fine, go on and try if you wanna, but I'm gonna eat my sundae. I'm about to bowl. I know I've been off the card, this hey, game kinda... Are you nuts? What's the most addictive drug in the world? How should I know? It's sugar, Patty. Far more people sugar die from Patty. obesity and diabetes than from cocaine and heroin. Alexis, would you give her some milk? Oh, my lord. Coming right up, honey. Sugar might be dangerous, but it ain't against the law. You got no right to take that from me, even if you are some FBI agent. Actually, Patty, I do. We signed a contract, remember? I promise to protect you from all the evil in our world. Hey! Ooh. Mm. Delicious. What an amazing chocolate <laughs> sundae. Zach, I think we just uncovered an incredible treasure here. 
I feel like I could eat one of these every day while we're in this town. Oh, what? Uh. Just hurry and finish up your investigation. I can't stand being inside this place without. Don't worry, Patty. You just wait here. Meh. That's funny. Hey, Miss Carpenter? I can't. I didn't see it. Excuse me, ma'am. Oh, howdy, stranger. Ma, you're a handsome one. You came out here from the city, didn't you? I can always spot you city folk from a mile away. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Would you mind calling me York, ma'am? Oh, so you are from the FBI. <laughs> I thought as much. So sophisticated. <laughs> well, my horoscope in the paper today told me I'd be meeting someone new. And those horoscopes never miss. They are the real deal. Well, one even predicted when I'd bowl my first perfect game. Oh, no! Oh, could you stand a bit closer to me? Whew, that was a close one. If you move any further that way, you'll cast a shadow over the lane. Well, the sheriff did that once, and something horrible happened. The next time I bowled, I got a gutter ball. First time in 12 years. I was mortified, and I am going to make sure nothing like that ever happens again. In our world, some routines lead to good things, while others only lead to the bad. So, you mustn't ever cast a shadow over the lane. Is that understood? It's her routine, Zack. Understand? Just like us and coffee. Incidentally, ma'am, would you mind letting me use this lane too? I'm investigating the Lee Clarkson murder case. And I need to topple ten maidens, no matter what it takes. No, absolutely not. Not even the FBI can take my lane from me. I haven't given it up once ever since my husband passed away over a decade ago. I'll never break my promise to him. But... Now, if you'll excuse me. They <laughs> look crazy. Yeah! Ooh, you like that? That's what I'm talking about. Who's your mama? Zack, it looks like negotiations have failed. Now I'm afraid we have no choice but to force her to let us use her bowling lane. Yes, I know. I won't do anything illegal. Oh my god, I feel like a side quest coming up. Well, I guess this carpenter is use the bowling. I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't think I'll be able to get to some gameplay during this. This LP. Excuse me, Mrs. Carpenter. Stop! Not now! Can't you see I'm already in my bowling stance? What, are you blind? <laughs> oh my god. Holy mother of bowling balls, let me pick up this split. Holy mother of bowling balls, let me pick up this split. Holy mother of bowling balls, let me pick up. I can't do it. I can't take this game. Oh, oh, 
always works on a split. Oh, yeah, it never fails. <laughs> Zack, our new friend, appears to be a very superstitious lady. We should try and utilize this trait of hers in order to gain access to the lane for a bit. That was an amazing shot, Mrs. Carpenter. In fact, it may have been the most amazing shot I've ever seen. Speaking of which, where did you happen to find all those neat little items? The ones you used to help you bowl that split just now. Ooh, you got a keen eye there, Mr. Special Agent. Taking a liking to my collection, have you? Oh, yes. A great liking. I buy all my charms and power stones from Erzuli Frida. Erzuli Frida? Yes, it's a mystical establishment run by the mirror. The mirror? If you're interested, I can mark it on your map for you. Oh, I feel like a sack this. Zack, this is it. Erzuli Frida. There must be a treasure trove of dubious trinkets on sale there. We may even be able to find something capable of changing her mind. It really feels like we're in the deep south now, doesn't it? We'll do this mission first. Then I might. But those go for like two or three hours, so. Oh God, frame, frame. Oh my god. All right. I thought you came here to bowl. Yes, I did. Then why are you leaving? You gave up on trying to convince Mrs. Carpenter to let you play? No, Patty, neither Zack nor I have given up on anything. We're just going to stop by Erzuli Frida. Erzuli Frida? What do you want with that place? I want to look at that. I think it's this place. So you clearly love TV shows, but what about movies? Movies? We don't even have a movie theater around here. So I can only watch what I manage to catch on TV. I want like skateboard For some reason, the only movie channel we get at home is the sci-fi one. Oh my god. So I just watch a lot of sci-fi. Oh my like god. Like what? What's the last one you saw? Uh, the one with Schwarzenegger, where there's all these clones. The Sixth Day, 2000, directed by Roger Spottiswood. You must be very well versed in sci-fi if you can appreciate an Arnold S. film. I thought it was way too easy for them to make more clones. And you'd never see a clumsy investigation like that on CSI. That's right. It's realistic. Everything about that film is so realistic. It may be difficult for a child to understand. But, Patty, that's not your fault. All of Arnold S.'s films are filled with hyper-realism, you know. On top of that, 
Roger Spottiswood is a director who excels in dealing with hardcore subject matter. Turner and Hooch, Stop or My Mom Will Shoot, each film features one of the toughest tag teams you'll ever find. Oh, that's my skateboard. I just press Y. Y, get on off, A to speed, B to slow down. Hey Zach, it looks like we were right on the money. Tracing the San Rouge distribution route led us right to Louisiana. You know what that means. We've got a hot hand. And Lady Luck's given us far more favor than she ever has before. I just noticed my like skateboard has a percentage. Mood, while sitting in a bar during our vacation in New Orleans. Gun it. How do I put my damn gun? Inventory. I guess I don't have a gun yet. I ain't gonna lie to you. I think the first one runs better. It, that game was on the PS3 and uh Xbox. Did again? I actually didn't play the, the Switch version of this game. A voodoo shop. It's a voodoo shop. Just looks like a dumb souvenir shop to me. Of course it does, Patty. You're much too young to understand the true value of such a place. A second. Patty, what's that? That tree? Or the water tower? That thing I'm pointing at. That. Like I said, what? That thing. Right there, Patty. Just tell me what it is. How am I supposed to know which that you're referring to? Oh, you're goofing on me, ain't you? <laughs> this is funny. All right, let's go inside this place. This is all kid stuff. It's just a bunch of charms. I'm allowed to watch TV and go guys. on the internet, but I ain't allowed in here. My daddy makes no sense sometimes. You agree, right, Agent York? Yes. This is all just kid no. stuff. <laughs> Look at this sack. All the mysticism of the deep south gathered up into one quaint little shop. This is a hundred times more exciting than the FBI evidence vault. It's a vast treasure chest. So much to study, so much to learn. And this looks like a final boss. All right. I'm trying to do some shopping also. I, I try to get this. I gotta get this microphone. Thou art a seeker, and I see the object of thy desire. Doth this be what thou seekest? I could sell it to thee now, and only now. Surely fortune shall not bless thee with another chance. 
goods. Purchase this, and know that thy wishes shall be granted. That's crazy. Even I can tell you're getting cheated, Agent York. I disagree, Patty. This person can be trusted. I've been studying people for quite a while, so I can tell. That figurine is connected to our future. My price is true. What say thee? So I gotta buy this for the, the old lady. Buy the gailer for the... Oh, $30? Yeah, I get that. Yeah. I'll buy it. Thou art a man of refined taste. I am loath to part with it, but twould be a fool's errand to keep it from such a keen-eyed soul. What's wrong with you? No normal person would ever buy a piece of junk like that. Not even at a garage sale. Marvelous, isn't it, Zack? <laughs> what a treasure. This game's so now charming. Can't wait to use it. Use it? Where? How? Isn't it obvious, Patty? I'm going to put it in front of Mrs. Carpenter's house. In front of her house? Yes. I'm sure this figurine will stop her right in her tracks. And that'll give us a chance to finally topple the Ten Maidens. Oh, God. Are you serious? Of course I am. And so is Zack. Aren't you? I'm seriously wondering if I should quit helping you out with this. I hope the gun, they again the gun gameplay, another one was kind of ass, so. We'll see. And speaking of guns, I just noticed that. Oh. Uh, oh, no. Verily, much shall. Charms, charms. Can help you out in various ways. Necklace, boost, internal effects, dials, boost, physical. Increase boost skateboarding abilities, talismans, boost performance in, in meaty games. Oh god, meaty games. Did it again. Ah, it's too early for all that right now. Thou hath me alone. I ain't gonna lie, so I'm kind of burnt out when it comes to the Texas so far. So much text, so much text, so much text. <laughs> oh, that's a side quest? I never knew that. Whoa. That was close. Look at you, all standing there like you're expecting me to apologize. Huh, it's your fault for not paying attention. What? Got a moment? Can't say I do. I'm in a hurry here. I won't take up too much of your time. I'd just like to ask you a few questions. I said I'm in a hurry, Pickerwood. Now get out of my way. He does. Patty. Who was that? Kalina Clarkson. PJ Clarkson's second daughter, and Lisa's mother. Zack, we've found ourselves a Clarkson. Oh no, she's not here. My dolly. She's not here. My dolly isn't here. One of the key persons in this case just came out of the woodwork to meet us. Now things are really getting interesting. Isn't that right, Zack? So I 
guess I gotta talk to her. Alright, before we leave, I guess. I guess talk to her. If I can. Yeah. Dally Missy. So you little Dally. I guess I can't. Oh well. We'll probably see her again. Did I be banned too? No. I have like I said, here's the thing. I don't be gaming as much as people. My time is very limited right now. I try to focus more on music so I can actually establish try to make my music my second main source of income so I can quit my second gig. Now with that being said. We'll see. All right, turn that off real quick. Guess we go back to whoa. Map. No. Place the alligator from his carpet house while she's home. So I guess I can't do that yet. So I guess we'll go, I guess go here. It don't matter, we're just gonna go. So, if you think of it, yes. Talking about him. Oh God! Wow. Is the skeletal gentleman friend or foe, or does he merely exist outside the realms of? Earth? Still too early to tell. But it's clear that he'll be the key to uncovering this case's mysteries. That's what my soul tells me. By the way, Zach, Ungan feels very familiar to me. You might even say he reminds me of someone. Yes, I think I see the connection. Cheerful, wise, yet also mysterious African-American who appeared in a variety of different films. My mind is <laughs> this is like the fastest damn skateboard in gaming you history. Ah, uh, yes, that's it. Scatman Crothers. In 1980, he played Dick Halloran in The Shining. And in 1983, he was in The Twilight Zone. He played the man who invited all those elderly folks into a strange new world. I knew it, Zach. There's definitely a connection here, but he's a bit too old. All right, with that being said, did you notice it yet? The streets in New Orleans were a mess. All busted up and undergone maintenance. The city was built on a swamp, so the ground is soft. All it takes is some heavy rain to cave it all in. I don't think she be home. Can I shoot the dog? Bad timing, Zach. We need to place the figurine in front of her house when she's home. Otherwise, it'll be useless. Let's come back later. Looks like a case of bad t Let's come back later. What the hell the chick doing? Oh. This damn game. Oh my god. Alright, uh... I guess we'll go over here. I guess we'll go... Wait. I did not know that was her house.
I could speed up the time by smoking, but I guess the chick, the girl, probably wouldn't allow me. Not there. I love how the girl just disappears. Uh, also, I might be. I'm not gonna probably play do the game hundred percent. Do shrink. I might be playing this on my own time. Also, wait, wait, wait. I think that's the way I need to go. <laughs> this is a skateboard for you. I guess I'll go here to probably speed up the time to do that. No, nothing. Just felt like saying that. This side mission. This shit is loud as hell. So, you think of him? Yes, I'm talking about him. Boomba. Is the skeletal gentleman a friend or foe? Or does he merely exist outside the realms of Uther? Still too early to tell. But it's clear okay. that the key to uncovering okay, here this case is mysteries. That's what my soul tells me. By the way, Zach, Hoongan feels very familiar to me. You might even say he reminds me of someone. Yes, I think I see the connection. A cheerful, wise, yet also a mysterious African American who appeared in a Or something. <laughs> God damn it. Mr. York! That was matter quick! It was? Wait, what? The special agent does it again. <laughs> you sure don't waste any time. I bet my CLG's got a lot to learn from you. Uh, by the way, Mr. York, looks to me like you aren't packing anything. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that I guy. I was on vacation in New Orleans before I happened to stop by here. <laughs> well, shoot, that won't do. Here, I got something I think you'll like. Purple gun. <laughs> I call him Mr. Alligator. Badass, ain't he? It's a tranquilizer gun for the gators. Oh, tranquilizer gun. Whoa, whoa, what do we see this game? And here's okay. a radio. With this, you won't have to worry about any expensive roaming fees. Might take you a while to get used to him, but you'll get it.
try letting them rip a few times. Ain't no need to hold back out here. Now, this is an intriguing weapon. For a tranquilizer gun, it really packs a punch. But I'm afraid I'll decline. After all, this town is peaceful, isn't it? Well, sure is peaceful. At least the humans are. But the animals? <laughs> a different story. Uh, remember what I named it? There are some real mean-ass gators out there in the swamps. And every now and then, they wander into town. One of them even went and ate a kid once. It happened a long time ago, but still. One chomp's all it takes. They swallow down every last bit of you. Poor kid's parents didn't even know what to put in his coffin. The worst part is, that taught the gators just how tasty we humans are. So now, those suckers just attack on sight. Man-eating crocodiles will feast tonight in Blood Swamp. This man weird. You know he's fibbing, right? Gators don't attack folks. I never heard about no kid getting swallowed by a gator. Actually, Patricia, you're wrong. I'm what? Alligators do attack people, and it could happen in any town. Huh? Alligator, 1980. Directed by Louis Teague. It takes place in the Midwest, I believe. A teenage girl's pet alligator gets flushed down the toilet. Then, in the sewer, it feeds on the corpses of dogs that were used as test subjects for an experimental growth formula. After growing over 30 feet, it finally starts to go after humans. It's an extremely... Yes, an extremely edifying movie. Back when I first saw it, I had a pet hamster. Hey, Agent York. What's your first order of business? You're in charge now, remember? Well said, Patricia. I nearly lost sight of my true goal. Melvin, I couldn't help but notice the name on the side of that truck. This facility is connected to the victim, isn't it? Oh! Oh, right. Yeah. I reckon I better start from there. I'm gonna tell it to you straight right from the beginning, Mr. York. As you guessed, this warehouse is run by the Clarksons. The victim's father, Danny Clarkson, is the one who manages the whole place. Okay, but why did he choose to store her body in his own warehouse, right?
Well, that's because there ain't no other place to store it. Our town has a clinic inside a church, but no more. Whenever someone kicks the bucket, we just bury him in the graveyard right outside of town. But not this time. We got a murder on our hands this time. We need to give Lisa's body an autopsy and keep it stored, right? So we had no choice but to rent out a corner of this warehouse. I see. So that's what led to the ingenious choice to store the victim's body in a facility that her family owns. Anywho, this is where the real story begins. Truth is, a few days before you got here, Lisa's body went missing. Missing? Yeah, all of a sudden, poof. Did you leave the warehouse unlocked? I most certainly did not. I locked the whole place up and made sure no one could get inside. No one stole the original key, and I couldn't find any fingerprints at the scene. So, in other words, this is a locked room mystery. The body of a beautiful young girl walks at me. I hey! This man weird. All right, all right, CLG. Reckon I should have told you about this earlier when you first said you wanted to come here. <laughs> it just didn't seem like the time or places I remember. Anywho, how about we call it a day and head back to my office? You can go through all the files there. No, thank you. This is what I came to investigate. But Lisa's body isn't here anymore. You sure? That doesn't bother me one bit, Melvin. You see, I met a skeletal gentleman on my way here, and he was kind enough to give me an oracle. Patty, this town is so peaceful. Excuse me? Did you forget that we're investigating a murder case? True, but it's still far more peaceful than the city I live in. Okay. Okay, I gotta stop trying to talk to her. They just gonna cut off text. Then again, I'm still towards the beginning of this game. I think I'm fucking three hours total. But the open world aspect is a pain. You holding up, okay, CLG? Sure you don't want to wait outside. Ooh, I'll be fine, Daddy. Just make sure you don't take your eyes off of him. He's so selfish and inconsiderate. I'm still not convinced he's actually a real FBI agent. Look, he's talking to himself again. <laughs> Zach, this is the ambiguous zero, the deep freeze. Let's hurry up and find that flying serpent, shall we? Head to the mo Okay, that's that word. Alright, let's save it real quick. Let's see, I might be my toolbox. Yeah, rubber bullets. Oh, yeah, pistol whip. All right. Okay. Yeah, 
visions. Visions can be used important to help proceed throughout the game. This looks like the eagle eye. Or detective mode. Always gives me goosebumps, no matter how many times I come here. Yes, it's quite the fun house. Truly a dazzling place. Meet entertainment. That's the only way to describe it. Woven together by life, frozen in time, a visceral musical. Symphony. We eat all this in order to survive. Yes, truly a symphony. Life and death resonating together. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, cool? <laughs> Whoa now, CLG. Since when were you interested in this kind of stuff? What are you so surprised for, Daddy? I'm more mature than you are. I've seen way more realistic corpses on CSI, you know. <laughs> oh, man. At first, Sack, I was shocked by the notion of storing a victim's body alongside food. But as I gaze upon this hanging garden, I realize it's just another scene of violent, depraved murder. Yes, all we need to do is change our point of view, and things will expose themselves in utterly new ways all right hey uh mr york this is kind of um yeah melvin if you have something to say then just go on and say it otherwise you'll simply be insulting this beautiful landscape you, you think this is beautiful oh yes it's the abnormal world that supports our normal lives. I think that's wonderful, don't you? Besides, look, Patricia seems to be handling this a lot better than you are. Well, uh, you see, I ain't too good with this grotesque stuff. Shiver. Don't let it get to you, Daddy. Whew, everyone has at least one thing they're afraid of. Even you, right, Agent York? Something I'm afraid of? Yeah, that's right. You gotta have at least one thing. Hmm. Like clowns. <laughs> clowns are so funny. How could anyone be scared of them? Zombies? Love them. A bucket full of worms. I could squeeze them with my bare hands. The sound of screeching glass. Oh, God. Doesn't bother me. Then... They cling to your skin like putrid leeches, robbing you of much more than your vitality. The wet socks. <laughs> Melvin, you're a genius. Alright, that's funny. Alright, so I'm supposed to be... This is like an old-ass Nintendo Switch game. So you think about it. Got skateboard here? No. That's my objective. Oh, here too. Oh, never mind. I just came from here, right? Guess not. Melvin, oh. I'd like to take this opportunity to ask you a personal question. In the hotel parking lot, when I first met you, the picture you had on your dashboard happened to catch my eye. Was that? Oh, her? Yeah, that's my lady, all right. Candy. Her name's Candy. 
prettiest girl in town, which makes me the happiest boy. A shooting star landed in a rural town, right on top of a man who now has a meteor struck heart. You always keep her photo with you? <sighs> you bet I do. The truth is, Candy's a little sick right now. She can't even leave the house no more. So I always keep her photograph with me. Kind of feels like we're always together, you know? I see. You care for your wife a great deal. But this means that... Yeah, that's right. My mama had me before she married daddy. But it don't matter. He's still my real daddy to me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you, CLG. And... You're my pride and joy. Well, Zach, isn't this a heartwarming scene? But there's one thing I just can't get out of my mind. Don't you think that photograph looked a bit too old? Perhaps Candy is already... No, let's not think about that. It might be a private matter just like you, Zach. Da 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 da. Alright, let's go through here. I got a map. Oh shit. <laughs> My blind ass. Alright. Oh yeah, I forgot about the crouch. You, you will lose money if you shoot them, so I'm not gonna do that. I swear to God, if I gotta shoot this damn thing. Okay. I can't read. Zach, the morgue. They stored the victim's body in a cold storage warehouse operated by her family. I'd love to shake the hand of whoever came up with that one. Hey, Agent York.
Did you just come here to laugh at rural officers who are doing the best they can? We don't have any special facilities like you people. What else did you expect us to do, huh? Don't compare us with city folk. This is Lucare. Or maybe you're just disappointed that you didn't get to see the bloated, decomposing corpse of a young girl. Sorry, you're right. I went a bit too far just now. But don't misunderstand, I honestly think it's a fantastic idea. I'd never try and bully your daddy. <laughs> Better not. Thank you for understanding. Who's, who took Lissy's body? Boxes that got left behind. I can't tell what's inside. What do you think, Zach? I'm gonna go with okra. Yeah, okra. I'm sure it must be okra. That's a staple of the South. An icicle? Never thought I'd see one of these down in the South. Zach, can you see that? Look closely. That's right. There are four imprints in the frost on the top of this. It's hard to believe, but I think these are fingerprints. Yes, Zach, that would lead one to believe that the body napper is a giant who's over 10 feet tall. God damn. These pallets are a mess. Looks like this area isn't used often. Still, the idea to store a... It's a novel, sophisticated idea unlike anything I'd ever come up with. Look at the thermometer, Zach. It's at 10 degrees Fahrenheit, or a minus 12.2 degrees Celsius. This must not be the ambiguous zero. This frost is shaped like something we're very used to seeing. That's right, a body bag. Lisa's body must have been left here. But there are no signs that the bag was dragged away. So our criminal must possess monstrous strength. Zach, these are human footprints, and they're extremely large. Yes, Zach, I agree. These footprints must belong to someone who's used to walking around in cold temperatures. $55! Seems like our flying serpent isn't here. Is this everything, Melvin? There aren't any other rooms in this warehouse? No special rooms. Well, there is the luxury foods warehouse. Luxury foods? Why didn't you say so earlier? <sighs> just thought you wanted to see where the body... Uh, I mean, I just thought you were only interested in warehouse number two. Besides, it's underground, so it's even colder than this. Uh, you sure you really want to go down there? You could darn well freeze to death. All life will come to an end in the icebound zone. Yes, man. <laughs> you feel me? Let's head there at once. I'm sure that must be where we're meant to go. But, but what about searching for Lisa's body? All we need to do is find a 10 foot tall man with monstrous strength. That giant knows where she is. Oh, 10 foot tall? But finding the flying serpent is more important right now. Now please, guide me to the luxury foods warehouse at once. 
These luxury foods are most likely being used in local Cajun cuisine. I'm so excited to see what we'll find. Aren't you, Zach? this one way that never mind uh that elevator needs a key mr york do you have one actually no i didn't think you'd ever want to go down there so I didn't bother to go and get one. Well, then would you go and get one now? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. COG, I know. I'll tell it to him straight. Uh, thing is, Mr. York, you know the Clarksons, the folks who own this place? Well, they don't too much like the police. And they sure as hell don't like them when they're my color. <laughs> It was, uh, real hard for me to get permission to open up this place for you to search through. So they ain't gonna be too happy if I go back to them now, asking for another key. What should we do then? Let's just find a worker here who can lower the elevator for us instead. All they need to do is take a break from their work for a couple minutes. And what am I supposed to do? Just stand here and pretend like nothing's happening? Yeah. You FBI folks are good at that, right? That's always what I see you doing on TV. All right. The elevator won't move without a key, Mr. Yo. Think you two can go and figure something out? I'll search around here. How? I know. <laughs> Zack, I think we can move this. Better check back here as well, just to be on the safe side. Now I can move it. Girl following me? Nope. The frame rate probably go crazy if the girl following me. <laughs> Knew it. Puzzle guy. Woo. Alright, let's get this out of the way. Alright, you got the shortcut. Yo, get this out of the way. I'm stuck. Oh. Zach, the human ability to adapt is a frightening thing. Some humans have the power to sleep anywhere as long as they set their minds to it.
Now we should be able to operate the elevator. No need to worry. This facility no longer has a body to steal. What else do they have to lose? A few cans of crawfish? I feel bad for him, but it's for the sake of the investigation. I'll write him a letter of apology later. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I kind of the game is pretty intriguing so far. All right, little girl. Mr. York, did you find a key? Ha, now that's my special agent. There ain't no stopping you. Want to head straight down? You bet. Let's sally forth, Melvin. Zach, look at that thermometer. Zero degrees Fahrenheit, or minus 17.7 degrees Celsius. This is the ambiguous zero. Hey, Avery! Can you hear me? Open the damn door, Avery! Oh, it ain't no use, Mr. York. It looks better than Once Avery starts working the on original something, daily premonition. that's all he sees. He just tunes out everything else. Oh, we'll have to wait until he finishes and comes out to us, I reckon. Or we could come back tomorrow. I disagree, Melvin. Time may be on our side, but that doesn't mean we should waste it. You gave me Mr. Alligator precisely for moments like these, didn't you? Wait, Mr. York! Those tranquilizers may be non-lethal, but it's still dangerous to use them on humans. Of course, Melvin. I never said I was going to shoot him. You're gonna shoot some meat to get his attention. I'm right, ain't I? I guess I'll stop it right there. That's what got me. I gotta shoot that. Either way, for YouTube purposes, if you like this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. For Twitch purposes, I'll probably be back streaming later tonight. Who knows? I might start this Ghost of Tsushima gameplay. Who knows?